Hi everyone, my name is Ned, and in part two of this video series, we will learn how to import the Excel file into Caspio and begin developing the application. This Excel file is available for download, and I would encourage everyone to try to replicate what I do in the video. All you need to do is set up a 14-day Caspio trial and follow along. It's the best way to learn how to use Caspio. You'll have a lot of fun, and at the end of it all, you will have an application created that you can showcase to your coworkers and friends and be proud of what you were able to accomplish. Let's quickly review the Excel file so that we know exactly what we'll be importing inside Caspio. As I mentioned before, this Excel file contains five different spreadsheets, and the very first one that's selected contains the list of all the sales. The information that we're tracking in this data sheet is we have the product name, we have the rep ID, location city, state, sale amount, and date of sale. Each sales entry contains its own unique ID. We have the product name, and a very important column here contains the rep ID. We want to be able to track and know who was the rep that submitted that sale. And if we look at the table that contains all the reps, you will see that each rep contains its own unique ID. So for example, Max is ID number one, and Milia is ID number two. If I go back to my sales table, you will see that this sale here belongs to rep ID 1, who in this case is Max, and this sale here contains the rep ID 2, which in this case is Amelia. And if you go down the list of all the sales, you'll be able to track and see who was the employee or the rep to have submitted that sale. The rest of my tables contain products. So this is going to be a very simple lookup table. So if you imagine on the website, you see a drop down on the submission form, and in that drop down, you can select the product. That's exactly what this lookup table is going to serve. We also have a table that contains all the states. Once again, on the dropdown, we can select the state. And finally, last but not least, I have a uh, table that contains the list of all the administrators. Now, in my example here, I only have one admin listed, but imagine you had multiple administrators who have highest level permissions. They can log in and have the ability to edit products, edit sales, maybe reassign a sale to a different rep etc. Now let's go inside Caspio and learn how to import this Excel file. Once you're logged inside your Caspio account, it's very easy to begin building an application. All you need to do is click on this link new app and this window will prompt you on how you can begin. So if you're importing data using Excel or let's say Access Database, you can begin this way. Conversely, if you're building your application from scratch, in other words, you're not importing any data, you can begin this way. Because I have my Excel file, I'm going to simply click on this button to start importing my data. But before I import my data, I have to give my application a name. You're going to have your own naming convention. It really just depends on the type of application you're developing. So for example, if you need to build a CRM, you can call it CRM. If you need to build inventory management, you can call it inventory management. I'm going to call my application sales management. Feel free to use the same name if you'd like, but you are welcome to use any name for your application and for your own purpose and needs. If you did download the Excel file, go ahead and find that Excel file on your computer. It's called Sales. It is a workbook file. I'm going to click Open. And the moment you click Next, take a look and see what's happening in the background. Caspio is creating the application container, and it's in the midst of uploading that data file. We now have to go through two additional screens before we are done with the import. So let's go to the first screen. On the first screen, you're going to see the list of all of your tables that you're importing from Excel. And here you have the ability to pick and choose what table you want to bring in. In this case, we're going to bring in all five tables. The second column, which is called Action, allows you to specify how you want to bring this data into Caspio. We're going to create new database tables for each one of these files that we're importing, but you do have the option to change the behavior from, let's say, create new to replace or append or update or update design. I do recommend that you try out each one of these actions at some point so that you can see the effect that you have once you bring data into Caspio. I'm going to keep the table names the same, even though you have the ability to change the table name to something else. Let's go to the second screen. On this screen, we have the ability to toggle back and forth between our tables. 
We can also see the original field names from the Excel file. Directly underneath that, we can change the field name to something else. Underneath that, we can also include all of the fields that we want to import, or we can exclude a specific field if we don't wish to have that field be imported into Caspio. And finally, we have something called data type. Each field should have a correct data type associated with the field. Now, because Excel is not a true database, I do need to make a few modifications in order to keep the integrity of the application. And don't worry if you don't make these changes right away. Even after you click import, you can still make all of these changes even after you import the data. For my first table of administrators, I'm going to change the user ID field from number to something that's called auto number. Why do I want to make that change? Well, when I add a new admin to this table, I would like to automatically assign a new ID to that admin. And if you used auto number, it's going to have an increment of one. So next person will be two three, four, so on and so forth. So we're just automatically assigning a new value to each admin in the table. The second thing that I want to do is change the password data type from text255 to password. What this allows you to do is to add more security on your table. So if anybody opens your table and wants to see the password, they're not going to be able to see the password because it'll be encrypted. Let's go to our second table of products. The only change I want to make here is change this from number to auto number because when I add a new product to this table, I would like to assign a new ID to that product. Let's go to our reps table. Every time I add a new rep to my rep table, I would like to assign a new value. So we're going to change that once again from number to auto number. And we're going to change the password to password data type. Let's go to our fourth table now. Now this table of sales is where we keep track of all of the sales. This is more or less your main table. When I add a new sale to this table, I would also like to assign a new value to each sale. For my rep ID column, I'm actually going to change this from number to integer. The reason why I want to do that, let's go back to the reps table. Each rep will automatically be assigned a new value. That's how they're going to be recognized based on that ID. But if I want to stamp this ID now in a related table, and the related table in this case is the sales table, I need to store that as an integer because integers are whole numbers. And each rep will have a whole number, one, two, three. It's never going to have a decimal. This is the reason why you want to change this to integer so that you can correctly stamp the ID of the rep in the sales table. And the last thing that I want to make here is for my sale amount, I'm going to change this from number to currency, and I'm actually going to go ahead and change the date data type from text 255 to a date and time data type. The last table, which is the states table, I'm going to change this from number to auto number. I don't know if you noticed a similar pattern, but if you look at all of your tables now, each table will have an auto number, which is an automatically generated number. And in a database environment, you should always have an automatically generated number inside each table. That's what's called a primary key. If you have a table and you're not automatically generating a number, you're not doing something correctly. So each table should have a primary key. Caspio does allow you to use different ID types. You don't have to use auto number every single time. We have the ability to use a GUID, which is a long secure ID that's randomly generated. You can also do a prefixed ID. And we also give you the ability for a composite key, which concatenates multiple fields into a single field using a formula field. We're not going to talk about that in this video series, but I do want to mention that you could have a compound key that concatenates multiple fields together into a single field. And you just need to flag that as a unique field, and it's always automatically going to be generated. Once you're done, go ahead and click on import. It shouldn't take too long. After the confirmation message, as soon as you hit the close button, Caspio immediately takes you inside the framework for that specific application. The way you get to this screen is, let's go back out to the home page. On the home screen, you will always be able to see the list of all of your applications. In Caspio, you can build multiple applications. These apps can be for different departments. You can even become a reseller. If you have clients and you want to sell these applications to your clients, 
So there are a lot of ways to leverage the Caspio platform. Now inside my account, I only have one application, so all I'm going to do is click open to open up that container. And once again, we're going to be back inside that same screen that we just looked at a moment ago. To build this application, you're going to be using these objects on the left hand side. And if you notice, the very first object that's highlighted by default is the overview tab. This screen is mostly informational to help you keep track of your progress. So you could add notes as you begin to develop your application. You can see some metrics here in the middle. These metrics are actually very helpful. You can see how many tables you currently have inside this application. You can see total records across the tables. You can also see if you have any attachments or files that are inside this app. And of course, you have visibility on other metrics as well. After you're done with the overview screen, the most important place where you want to begin is always going to be the tables object. Tables are the foundation of any app that you develop inside Caspio. This is where all of your data is going to reside. Notice how we have all five of our tables from Excel now imported inside Caspio. And if you want to look at your data for each table, you can click on open. And here's all that sales data now that we imported from Excel, and it's now sitting inside an online database. The difference is if we look at the Excel file, this data is offline, and for those of you who have worked with Excel spreadsheets in the past, you know what kind of nightmare it can be to have to email these files back and forth, get all the updates, and then you have that one person consolidating all the data and generating reports. That's the beauty of using an online database, because in an online environment, you can build these interfaces for people to log in simultaneously and be able to make updates in real time. The only notification that you're getting is an email or an SMS text to let you know that the update is complete. And from there, you can log in as well using a mobile device or a browser and be able to generate reports for other team members. So that's a huge reason and benefit of why many companies and users are moving online and bringing their data online to be able to access data in real time and to just improve overall efficiency in the organization. Let's go back to Caspio. Once you have the table opened up, just like in Excel, you can click on each cell to make modifications. If you'd like to make modifications to your fields, you can click on Table Design. And here you can rename a field to something else. You can introduce a new field. And you can also change the data type to anything you want. Now in the Import screen, if you recall, I did mention that you can make all of these changes even after you import the data. Well, that's exactly what you can do under Table Design. Here you can change your data types, you can rename the fields, you can also introduce new fields to your tables. So don't worry if you don't make those changes during the import process. Now there are two additional changes that I need to make after I import the file, which the import screen doesn't allow me to do. So let's go back out to the tables menu. The first change I need to make is to go to my admin table and click on design. And I do need to make the email field a unique field as well. Why? Because no two different admins will have the same email address. The email is always unique to each admin. And we're going to be using the email field to log into the application later on. So it has to be set to unique. I also need to do the same thing to my rep table. So let's save the admin table now. Go back out to the tables menu. Click on design for the reps table. And also make the email field a unique field. Again, just like the admin table, you're going to have different reps inside this table, and each rep should have their own unique email. You're never going to have the same email for two different reps. Save the table, and once again, go back out to the menu. This concludes the video on how to import the Excel file into Caspio and how you can make modifications to your data types and also going through the import process of the file into Caspio. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Join me in the next video where I teach you how to build a login screen for both the admins and also the reps. In the fourth video of this series, we'll talk about how to build forms and reports. And in the final video, I'm going to show you how to deploy the entire application to your website. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next class.